Welcome to chapter four. We're going to be talking about using your ICD-10. So some of you guys have been through CPT with me, and so you kind of know um, the process. The process is basically the same. You pick out your main term, you look it up in your index, and then you double check it in your tabular because we always code two ways. All right. Um, I'm going to be doing a slideshow. It's not very long, uh, but I want to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, train of thought. A lot I want to say. <laughs> I want you guys to understand that as we get into coding, and I've said this to some of you before, that we're trying to code everything. I'm showing you a little snippet of how to code every single thing, but I want you to understand that when you code, a lot of time it's in a specialty. For example, I coded cardiology, so everything that I dealt with was pretty much cardiac related. Um, so I just want you to understand that we're just getting into it enough for you to get the understanding. Now, I'm actually going to pull up or pull out my um, ICD-10, and I don't have my webcam because I'm at home today. But this is your ICD-10, very big book. You're going to see that I have tabbed it. But I also wanted to point out there's lots of great information in your ICD-10. There's conventions, there's uh, signs and symbols, and there's guidelines. So get into this very beginning portion of your, your ICD-10 during while you're getting to know this uh, chapter so that you guys can um, Find out where that great information is because half the battle is knowing where to find things. Also, I wanted to share something with you right now. This is not really something you need to be doing unless you want to check an answer, but I wanted to uh, show you something. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to bring you to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now you guys see, uh, it says ICD-10-CM and it gives you the fiscal year. And if you check, if you click on that, it gives you an, you know, a drop down menu. I just wanna show you something. So search for all items. Let me put something in. Right hip laceration, push enter and look what it brings up. It actually gives me the ICD-10 code. So if you're having trouble with something, you can actually look it up on this site because it's going to give you your ICD-10 codes. Let's do, I'm just gonna put in cough, C-O-U-G-H, cough. And look what it gives me. It gives me coughing codes. Now you're still going to need to be able to look this up in your ICD-10, but just think if you're in your facility and you're looking for something, you can get into a site like this. There's lots of different ones. Find the ICD-10 code, and then you can actually use your ICD-10 to double check your code because even if you pull it from the internet, you need to check it two ways. Okay, that's one thing. Okay, now we're gonna go straight into our Google slideshow. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Guys, I just had my thyroid taken out. So I'm just having a little bit of trouble talking. So we're talking about the guidelines. Um, in the front of your ICD-10, you're going to be able to find the official guidelines for coding and reporting. Um, who developed this? The AHA, which is the American Hospital Association, CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The NCHS, the National Center, Center for Health Statistics. Um, you can look your guidelines up online. I just showed you that site uh, that you could look up ICD-10 on. You can find guidelines there, but also you have a paper copy already in your ICD-10 right at the beginning, just at your fingertips. So let's talk about the structure. It's arranged in sections. Section one is structure conventions and your general guidelines. That's what you're going to find at the beginning of your ICD-10. Section two and three are going to be your inpatient principal diagnoses and your additional diagnoses. Section four is outpatient. Outpatient references sections one, two, and three. 
and we're going to talk about the next step in coding. So what are the basic steps? Well, when you have your scenario, you're going to identify the main term. You're going to look up that term in your index, and then you're going to verify the code in your tabular. So let's pull out your CPT, and let's look at our example. Right hip laceration. Okay, guys, I'm a big map out guy, girl, not guy, I'm a girl. <laughs> my main turn is laceration. So I'm going to go to my index and I'm going to look up laceration. Then under laceration, I'm going to go to hip. Then I'm going to go to right. And it's going to lead me to ICD-10 code S71.011. Now you're going to see a, a red dot in front of that and it's going to tell you you need to add another character. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But right now I want to just just kind of give you the process. Now we're going to talk about the level of specificity. You're going to need to report to the highest character available. You cannot report a fifth character if a sixth, sixth character, character is available. The highest level of specificity is seven characters. For example, M48.48XA, A is your initial encounter. Okay. I'm going to give some more specifications. Give me just a second. No sixth character for M48.48, but there is a seventh character X as a placeholder. Again, sorry about my stumbles. But let me get that. All right. So if we actually go back to our example here, so I'm actually going to turn into in my CP, I'm sorry. Day class doing CPT, you guys are doing ICD-10. So in my ICD-10, I'm gonna to turn to S71.011. So go there with me. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that seventh character. So you see those red dots. Okay, so let's go set S71.011 laceration without foreign body, right hip. What does that red dot mean? Well, that red dot means use additional characters. All right, see that little gray box above S71.0? It says initial encounter, subsequent encounter, or sequela. That means we have to use A, D, or S to go along with this code. So let's count how many characters we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the A, which would be initial encounter, would be our seventh character. So we don't have to have an X to go there. When you need to use the uh, A through S characters that have your red dot in front of it, if you only have five alphanumeric uh, numbers for your code, you're going to use your X as a placeholder. I uh, know that that may sound a little bit um, confusing, but we're going to do some more work on it. So I don't want you to worry too much about that. Okay, let's talk about integral conditions. What is an integral condition? Diagnosis is stated, do not report signs and symptoms separately. So let's look at fever and shortness of breath due to pneumonia. Report only pneumonia. Fever and shortness of breath equals symptoms of pneumonia. Not integral conditions. A sign or symptom not part of the disease or condition means you code separately. Pneumonia and dehydration. J18.9 is pneumonia. 
E86.0 is dehydration. Not all patients with pneumonia have dehydration. So you need both pneumonia and dehydration. When the signs and symptoms are not due to a diagnosed condition, the signs and symptoms are reported separately. Dehydration was not stated to be due to the pneumonia, so therefore you use both. So let's talk about etiology and manifestation. So what is, some people say etiology, I usually say etiology. So etiology is the cause, set of causes, or manner of causation of a disease or condition. Manifestation, manifestation is a sign or a symptom of an ailment. So let's talk about diabetic retinopathy. Diabetes is the etiology or the cause. <clears throat> retinopathy is the manifestation or the symptom. You're going to need a combination code, which would be E10.319 type one diabetic retinopathy. Staphylococcal auroris cellulitis of face. It's a multiple code. It would be LO3.211, which is cellulitis, and the B95.61, which is the staph infection. Acute and chronic. Note, you always code acute first. So the way that I remember the definition of acute, <laughs> acute is short term. I always say acute boy comes and goes quickly. I don't know why I remember it that way. It's silly, I know, but it helps me remember. Chronic presents for a long period of time. Same condition, both acute and chronic, with separate same level of indentation in the index, you report acute first. Now let's look at our figure here. If we look at uh, pain acute, R52, but if you look at pain chronic, you're going to see G89.29. So it's very, very important that you pay attention to whether your conditions are acute or chronic. When acute and chronic conditions both exist and the index contains separate entities for both, use both codes if it says both acute and chronic. Always sequence the acute code first. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right, combination codes. A combination code is a single code used to classify two diagnoses, a diagnosis with an associated secondary manifestation, a diagnosis with an associated complication. Combination codes are identified by referring to the subterm entries in the alphabetic index and by reading inclusion and exclusion notes in the tabular list. Multiple coding should not be used when the classification provides a combination code and by reading inclusion, oh, I'm sorry, combination code that clearly identifies all elements documented in the diagnosis. If the combination code lacks necessary specificity in describing the manifestation or complication, then additional codes may be reported as a secondary code. So if we look at K80.00, it's acute colitis with, and I'm going to let you read that word. So that's a combination code because it's not just the colitis, it's with the colithesis. I'm sorry, guys, I just butchered that word, but there you go. <laughs> Residual and cause. Okay. <clears throat> Sequela are residual. Malunion of a fracture is residual. Late effects of a fracture is cause. So if you look at your little gray boxes when we're talking about your seventh character 
And uh, like A is initial encounter, D is subsequent encounter, and then S is sequela. Sequela simply means late effects. You're gonna report your residual as your first listed diagnosis followed by your late effects code. Some combination codes report one code and others require two. For bilateral sites, the final character indicates laterality, which will be right, left, or unspecified. Now we're gonna move right into laterality. Left, right, are extensive in the ICD-10. So let's look at our main code here. It says M7084. Other soft tissue disorders related to use, overuse, and pressure of hand. So if we look at uh, 841, that's the right hand, 842 is the left hand, and 849 is the unspecified hand. So that Laterality, these things are, are going to be very easy for you guys to figure out when you start coding simply because you're just going to use your information that you have and you're just going to match up your code. I know, not my best work. I'm really, really working hard to get um, my voice back to where it needs to be and my mind less foggy from my um, thyroidectomy. Um, so I'm going to be putting another video up that's simply about the seventh character and how you do that. Um, I hope that it didn't confuse you too bad. Um, and I hope that you guys have a great afternoon. And if you need anything, please call me. Bye-bye guys.